Hey guys, get excited. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my nighttime and morning skin and hair care routine, all in one video, starting with what I do after the gym at night. I'm all a sweaty mess, and the first thing I do is to remove my water-resistant sunscreen and mascara using a lipid-based uh, cleanser, whether it be this Pond's Cold Cream I'm currently using or the Hotelabo cleansing oil I've used in the past. I like to make use of these to break up that film of pollutants, dirt, oil, sebum, cosmetics. Uh, you can see how it nicely dissolves the uh, mascara uh, and that way I don't have to scrub with soap to get that off. Uh, and my hair, <laughs> this is what it looks like after, after I've gone running. It's kind of a sweaty, greasy mess. I do shampoo my hair on a nightly basis. And for the past month, I've been using a new shampoo and conditioner that has really been working well for me. It's by Function of Beauty. Today's video is in partnership with Function of Beauty. I always make sure the temperature of the shower water is lukewarm and avoid extreme temperatures. And I hop in there and immediately wash off that uh, Pond's cold cream, broken up mascara, water resistant sunscreen, dirt milieu with a non-soap gentle cleanser pH between 5.5 and 6.5. I'm currently using the Aquanil cleanser. I love this. It is frequently recommended by me and many dermatologists. It is uh, just a really great no-nonsense fragrance-free cleanser. I previously used the um, CeraVe Hydrating and Creamy Cleansers, Neutrogena's Cleanser. Uh, you know, the key is that it's fragrance-free and pH 5.5 to 6.5. Function of Beauty is doing something really novel and that they make it so easy to get a fragrance-free, dye-free, cruelty-free, and vegan shampoo and conditioner unique for your hair type, whether it be curly or color treated. It's super easy. You just go in and fill out a two-minute quiz outlining your hair type, hair goals, and personalized preferences. You can choose fra fragrance if you like, and you can even tell it how strong you want the fragrance, but of course, I went fragrance-free, and you can choose dye if you like, but but I, of course, went dye-free. Fragrance and dyes can be common causes of irritation in your shampoos and conditioners, and finding products that are free of those ingredients can be such a challenge. Um, all of Function of Beauty's products not only are cruelty-free and 100% vegan, but they are also sulfate-free. Sulfates can be pretty drying on your hair shaft. They don't have any parabens, GMOs, or toxins. I have been so happy with my experience using their shampoo and conditioner. I, of course, uh, love the fact that you can get your name printed on the bottle. I think that's so cute. Also can choose between two different sizes, 16 ounces and eight ounces. That way, if you use more shampoo than conditioner or vice versa, you can get a smaller bottle of whichever one you use less of. So I first start by lathering a good pump in my scalp. That's really where I direct my shampoo. I, I think of it more of a, as a scalp cleanser rather than a hair shaft cleanser. I think people focus too much of their attention when they shampoo on the hair shaft, and that can really lead to a lot of frizziness and dryness. So I try and di direct the majority of the lather to my scalp to remove excess sebum and oil. There's a high density of oil glands on the scalp. And guess who lives up there, you guys? our friend Malassezia, that little yeast that thrives in the oily surfaces of our skin. And that's what contributes to dandruff, itchy scalp. So I really try and direct the lather there to remove that excess oil because that little yeast loves the oil. I also make sure and get the back of my scalp. I really enjoy the uh, shampooing process. I find it very relaxing and zen to massage my scalp. Great news though about Function of Beauty. Currently, they're available not only in the U.S., but in Canada, Great Britain, the EU, Australia, New Zealand, and many other countries as well. 
you guys know I always advocate trying to go fragrance free as much as possible with all of your products, though typically I do use fragrance in my shampoos and conditioners because it can be so hard to find fragrance free shampoos and conditioners that address your hair specific hair concerns. Like if you have curly hair or color treated hair, it can be really challenging to find a fragrance free, dye free shampoo and conditioner, let alone cruelty free and vegan. I really need my shampoo and conditioner to leave my hair shiny and bouncy and manageable. I don't want it to be weighed down or greasy, and I want my scalp to feel clean, but I don't want the shafts in my hair to be dry or brittle. And so for that reason, I think I've always kind of uh, prioritized those things over fragrance-free, just because there are so few fragrance-free options out there. But with Function of Beauty, I am able to have a shampoo and conditioner that that achieves those goals while excluding fragrance and dyes. Not only that, cruelty-free and vegan. I mean, what more could I ask for? So I've been really happy, and I think you guys are going to love Function of Beauty as well. Click the link in my description box, and you can get 20% off your custom formula from Function of Beauty. After rinsing all the shampoo out of my scalp, I then come on with the conditioner, directing it just to the ends of my hair. This helps in coating the hair shafts and kind of strengthening them and reducing split ends. Now that my hair has gotten long, that's one of my major hair goals is reducing split ends that can lead to hair breakage. And a lot of people can mistake hair breakage for hair loss. And it can be very unsettling to, to have a lot of hair breakage going on. You may feel like you're losing your hair. Um, so with longer hair, I try and I try and keep the ends conditioned so that it reduces it reduces hair breakage. And I just let it sit on there for a few minutes before rinsing it out. So once I'm done with the shower, uh, I go ahead and turn the water off and then I take an old t-shirt to towel dry my hair with rather than a big heavy terry cloth towel. This will really help in cutting down on hair breakage if you have long hair. I've been doing this for years and it's a great way to reuse old ratty t-shirts and uh, it does a pretty good job. So to do this, you just put it around your head as if you're gonna put the t-shirt on, but you don't pull it all the way down over your head. And instead, you wrap your hair very gently as I'm doing here in a little turban, and then flip it over and it tucks really nicely. You know, they make dedicated hair turby twist towels that do the same thing, but I don't know. I find that this works slightly better actually. Um, and as soon as I get out of the shower, as soon as I step out to my damp face, I go ahead and apply my moisturizer. I do it right away. Doing it right away allows for you to seal in that water that would otherwise just evaporate out of your face as you're stepping out of the shower. Likewise, I've, I moisturize my body at the same time while the skin is still damp. I've explained this in other videos on how to moisturize before, um, but it is important to do it at that point. I'm using the DML moisturizing lotion on my face and Beauty 360 moisturizing lotion on my body. Both of these are fragrance free and the DML is one that I've frequently recommend as do many dermatologists. It's great for oily prone, acne prone skin. And um, I have also used CeraVe moisturizing cream in the tub in the past in numerous other moisturizers, but the principle is the same. Fragrance-free moisturizer to damp skin. Same thing on the body. The uh, Beauty 360 moisturizer I've been using on my body is likewise fragrance-free. Everything I'm using will be listed in the description box, but I don't know, don't fixate too much on the particular product that I'm using. It's more the principle that I want you guys to focus on. Fragrance-free, dye-free, putting moisturizers onto damp skin, keeping the routine simple and minimal. I'm just gonna put a little CeraVe healing ointment on my lips. This is a great uh, ointment for preventing dry, cracked lips, particularly in the winter time. But yeah, I mean, I will change out products when I finish them up and I've got others, you know, to finish up. I, I don't I don't like things to go to waste. So if I've got good products, I'm going to use them and use them up. And if things are on sale that I need, uh, you know, I'll always go with what the most affordable, co you know, cost-effective option is, so long as it meets the criteria of being basic, fragrance-free. Uh, at this point, my hair is dry and I'm just going to pin it up with some little uh, clampy doodles. 
But yeah, I mean, serums, toners, essences, those things are fun to experiment with. Some of them do have some active ingredients that you may be trying to incorporate into your skincare routine. But the only active ingredient that I use uh, is sunscreen in the daytime and then uh, prescription tretinoin at night, which I'll show you. Uh, I put that on very last. Uh, at this point, I'm just putting my hair up, though, uh, in a little pin, because after, after I do all this, I end up going and sitting at my computer for a couple of hours before bed, which is not the best for sleep hygiene, but uh, what can I say? <laughs> So yeah, at this point, that moisturizer has dried on my face. Like, there's no greasy film on my face. My face is hydrated, moisturized, and dry. This is the prime time to put on an active ingredient like tretinoin that is known to be irritating because doing it this way reduces the risk of irritation. If you put an irritating ingredient on dry skin or wet skin or skin that you haven't that is not moisturized, an impaired skin barrier, you're setting yourself for, up for more irritation. In the case of tretinoin, it, it does not it does not alter the impact of outcome in terms of, of efficacy. I mean, we don't have blinded studies showing that or anything, but you get good results doing it this way. Uh, we know that from clinical experience, and many, many dermatologists, myself included, recommend putting it on to a moisturized, dry face. The package insert says, put it on dry skin, and that's absolutely true. The skin should not be wet, but it should be moisturized. That Moisturized and dry. This reduces irritation from tretinoin if, if, that, if you're using tretinoin. Um, I avoid around my eyes, around my mouth, and I don't ever put it on my neck. The skin there uh, is much thinner and does not tolerate retinoids easily. You'll get a lot of irritation there. Um, so talk to your prescribing dermatologist on whether or not you should use it there. You guys asked me that, but honestly, I can't answer that for you. Only your treating healthcare provider can answer questions about the appropriate um, actives for you to be using and the appropriate uh, places to be putting them. So that's the person you should ask. But this is just how I put it on at night. I've been using it for what, two years now? And, um, you know, it's given me good control of my acne. And since using it, I've seen some increased improvement in hyperpigmentation. Um, I don't get irritated by it whatsoever, and yeah, I do get a lot of questions about percentage strengths of tretinoin, and honestly, it really doesn't matter. Uh, we don't have any studies showing that lower percentage strength of tretinoin is inferior to higher as far as uh, boosting collagen production and improving hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, fine lines. Uh, you know, it, lower percentage strengths work well. It's, it's more about if, if you're able to tolerate what you're using, uh, ultimately. Um, anyways, before bed, I put my hair up in this little satin sleep bonnet. You can get these on Amazon. They're great for cutting down on hair breakage if you have long hair like myself, or if you have hair that's just prone to breakage. Um, you know, when you, you lay on your pillow, whatever amount of tossing and turning you do, it can kind of frizzle frazzle your hair up. Um, and for me, my hair is long, so I'll end up lying on it funny, and it kind of puts a crick in my neck, and that's uncomfortable. So I love these, and you can wash them in the washing machine. And they also don't, like, hold on to hair products. So if you use uh, overnight hair mask type product, it's not going to, like, build up on the, on the fabric. Here I am the next morning, and you can see it stays in place really nicely and doesn't move around or fall off your head. And I just go ahead and pull it off. And this is the first time actually that I end up combing my hair. I used to not comb my hair, but now that it's longer, I kind of do this first thing in the morning. And what, what this helps with is it's normal to lose about 100 to 200 hairs a day. Um, they're called telogen hairs. And if you've got long hair in particular, as those come out, they kind of hang out within your hair. and so you kind of need to do a little comb through to remove them, otherwise they'll get stuck in there and then you'll have a ton of them come out all at once. And it's a little it's a little alarming when that happens. So I do this every morning, just kind of lightly comb through my hair with a wide tooth comb. I get these at the grocery store, they're really cheap. Uh, they're by the brand Goody. And um, yeah, I don't brush my hair though, I just do this comb action thing. And again, this is new to me. I used to not brush or comb my hair. Obviously, that's not going to work for all hair types, but that's what works best for me. If I brush my hair, it starts to get frizzy and break. And um, I just find that it's more manageable when I don't actually use a brush. When I use a comb instead, um, I'm able to 
make it happier. So before I do my AM skincare routine, I just pin my hair up uh, so it's out of my face while I put on my sunscreen because you guys, you guys have seen that so many times. You know what to expect with that in my routine, but I'm going to show you anyways. But yeah, I like to keep my hair out of my face for that. And I leave it pinned up like this for about 10 minutes after I put on my sunscreen. That way uh, it doesn't get, you know, my hair doesn't stick to my damp sunscreeny face. Um, yeah, I also like to use a hairband first thing in the morning. These ones by Goody are some of my favorites. Uh, I have them in a variety of colors. You can get them on Walmart or the grocery store. I see them a fair amount. You can also get them on Amazon. As per usual, I start my morning skincare routine with sunscreen. I don't wash my face anymore in, in first thing in the morning. I haven't in quite some time. My last skincare routine, you'll recall, I didn't do that. Uh, I just find I don't need to. And there's no need to wash your face the following morning to remove the tretinoin unless you've been advised to by your treating healthcare provider. It, it, it's not necessarily an absolute must, and I don't do that. So I put on a good layer of the sunscreen by Dermatology. It's SPF uh, 45 and has a nice tint to it. It is a combination sunscreen, so it has zinc and it's got some chemical filters, so it gives you good UVB and UVA protection and it's really moisturizing. It has niacinamide in it, uh, which is good for redness and it calms down inflammation. But a word of warning about the sunscreen, it is fragrance free, but it has a strange plasticky odor to it. I'm okay with it. It kind of smells like a pool float, but a lot of people find that off-putting. Um, but I just find it's a really nice moisturizer, basically. And so I put it on all surfaces of my face. Don't forget to put sunscreen on your ears, you guys. That is a really a common place for skin cancers to pop up is on the ears. After I put that on, though, um, I come on with another sunscreen. You don't have to come on with a different brand of sunscreen. I just like the look of the two layered. And the second one that I come on with is this Color Science Sun Forgettable Sun Shield SPF 50. I love this. It's only a mineral sunscreen, so it's zinc, titanium dioxide, and it's water resistant. And it, it too has a tint. Then under my eyes, I use this Color Science Total Eye 3-in-1 uh, um, renewal Therapy SPF 35. Again, it is a fragrance-free mineral tinted sunscreen and it also functions as a nice concealer. It has a peachy undertone. The applicator is kind of cool and it feels nice going on around the eyes. I just pat it in around my eyes. I don't have a, a, a cheaper dupe for this. Uh, the cheaper dupe is to just put your sunscreen around your eyes and not worry about it. But I love the way that that looks, so that's what I use. Also, don't forget to use a dedicated lip SPF to your lips. I personally adore Vanny Cream Lip Protection. It's a mineral sunscreen for the lips. And then I come on with my mascara. Um, I'm currently using Wet n Wild's Mega Volume. And then as that's drying, I use uh, a little extra sunscreen on my hands. And I pretty much rely on sun protective clothing during the day for my body, like long sleeves. And um, uh, I even drive with gloves on to protect my hands, but I just go ahead and get a good layer. Um, and I'm currently using this Nivea uh, sunscreen from Europe that a viewer sent me. It's great. It's fragrance free and a chemical sunscreen. So yeah, that is basically my AM and PM skincare routine. Um, and like I said, I let the sunscreen dry on there for about 10 minutes and then I go ahead and take my hair down. And I think I'm going to wear my hair down today. So I'll just go ahead and kind of quote unquote style it, if you will. But yeah, I, like I said, I've really been happy with the way my hair looks using that Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner. Like it stays pretty bouncy and healthy and shiny looking all day. Um, and it's very manageable and doesn't get frizzy. Now I will reapply sunscreen at least two more times today, if not three more times today. Even if I, I'm gonna be indoors the majority of the day, but I'm still gonna do it. Because you know what, you guys? It's a behavior, and sunscreen is only as good as it is on your face and covering all surfaces, all sun-exposed surfaces. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's kind of a wasted effort. It needs to be reapplied. It wears off. So I reapply it at least three times a day. That is my rule of thumb, at least three applications. If you're outdoors, though, you need to be reapplying every two two hours. Um, and also don't rely on sunscreen alone. You need sun protective clothing, sunglasses, hats. 
Like I said, I drive with uh, driving gloves too to keep the tops of my hands protected from those sunspots developing down the road and skin cancers. Yeah, sun protection is such an important part of skincare, whether it be for improving hyperpigmentation, anti-aging, improving the look of wrinkles and fine lines, acne control, rosacea, sensitivity, you name it. Uh, sun protection is a vital piece of that. And it needs to be comprehensive with avoiding peak exposure times, when the sun is at its highest point and avoiding staying outdoors for a prolonged period of time, reapplying sunscreen consistently throughout the day, and wearing sun protective clothing, using hats, sunglasses, a whole total sun protection package. That's basically my hair and skincare morning and evening routine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.